Hi, it's time for the Abbott and Costello Show. We're on the air for ABC here in Hollywood. Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go with the Abbott and Costello Show. Yes, it's the Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood for your listening pleasure with Susan Miller and Matty Malik's Orchestra. So hold on to your chairs, folks, for here they are, Bud Abbott and Lou Costello. Hello, what are you doing down at the railroad station this morning? Well, my Uncle Tom went off on his honeymoon, Abbott. He got married again, you know. Good for him. Yes, he got married, divorced, and remarried all in one day. He did? Yep. Hits, hits, and squits all in 24 hours. <laughs> well, is Uncle Tom, uh, is he happy with his new bride, Lou? No, he spent a couple of hundred dollars on a wedding, and after the ceremony, she took off her false eyelashes, her false hair, her false teeth, and her false lace. And he spent a hundred dollars for the wedding? Yep. He wound up with $99 worth of parts and one dollar worth of girls. <laughs> Mind your Uncle Tom. Why don't you settle down, Lou, and get married? Oh, I want to marry Esther Williams, but she won't marry me until I become a swimmer. How do you know? Well, every time I ask her to marry me, she says to me, go jump in a lake. <laughs> I'm so mad, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take some wrapping paper and go over to Nancy's dress shop. You're going to take some wrapping paper over to Nancy's dress shop? I'm sick of these pies, and they make such pretty bows over there. <laughs> Michelle, I think I'm safe in saying you are uh, 50% idiot. Abbott. Why be happy? Oh, get him out of here. Before the boys get any further involved in nonsense, here's a thought that makes good sense. Kids, here's an extra special way to enjoy yourselves every Saturday morning. Just gather around that radio and listen to the Abbott and Costello Kids Show. Here's a show that was designed just for you with those famous comedians, Abbott and Costello, up to all sorts of hilarious goings-on. Abbott and Costello conduct a whole bunch of contests on their Saturday morning fun fest. Why not see if you can outguess the contestants? In addition to this, you'll hear from many of your favorite stars of stage, screen, and radio. And here's the biggest feature of all. Each week, there'll be an extra special award consisting of a gold-mounted trophy, radios, bicycles, and sporting equipment, which will go to the boy or girl who has performed the most heroic deed of the week. It sounds like a lot of excitement, doesn't it? Well, it really is. Every Saturday morning when the Abbott and Costello Kid Show gets underway, it means prizes and surprises galore. So be at your radio Saturday morning when the Abbott and Costello Kid Show is heard over most of these same ABC stations. And now back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Cut that out, Costello. Put down that carrot. Good idea of eating carrots in the studio. The doctor told me to eat carrots for my eyes. My eyes have been bothering me, and I've been eating carrots for breakfast, carrots for lunch, and carrots for dinner. Now I can see swell in the dark. From eating carrots? No, I bought myself a flashlight. <laughs> Abbott hey, look, I understand that your club gave you a party for you last night. Yes, all the fellows were there. At 12 o'clock, they bought a great big cake, seven feet high. I cut it open, and six girls in bathing suits jumped out and hugged me and kissed me. Hmm, must have been wonderful. Oh, I don't know. I tasted better cake. I... <laughs> oh, pardon me. Pardon me. Which one of you gentlemen is Lou Costello? I'm Lou Costello. Are you the Lou Costello that lives at 4491 Long Ridge Avenue? Yes, I am. Well, thank goodness I found you in time. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. What, what's the idea of ripping my shirt? Well, I'm from the Van de Laundry, and we forgot to tear that this morning. <laughs> well, that was Abbott's nephew, folks. He said he'd be a doctor, but by being on his program, he is saving lots of lives. What do you mean? Well, he could be practicing medicine. <laughs> now, you lay off Norm. He's a very talented boy. He's also a great singer. Yes, but he sings in all the backyards in my neighborhood. People throw money at him. The other night, he was out in the yard singing, and two guys tried to take the money away from him. Why, why didn't he yell for help? He did. Everybody thought that he was singing an encore. Uh, 
When you talk sense, Norman is a great figure. He's got his opera. He spent the last 15 years on Faust. Norman spent 15 years on Faust? Mm-hmm. Then why have you been lying to me, Abbott? What do you mean lying to you? For the last 15 years, you've been telling me that who is on Faust and what is on Faust. No, no. <laughs> Don't be silly. You don't know the first thing about music. You don't even know how many how many kinds of notes there are. Oh, yes, I do. All right. Name the different notes. Well, there's wall notes, key notes, coconut notes, cashew notes. Cut <laughs> that out. I'm talking about musical notes. For instance, how many notes do you find in a bar? How many notes do I find in a bar? That's right. <laughs> My mother won't let me go into those places. Look, <laughs> a bar is a measure of music, and every bar gives you a full measure. A what? Every bar gives you a full measure. Not in Abbott's backstage bar, they don't. <laughs> that is the home of short fears. No, no, never, never mind that, Costello. In order to be a singer, you must be able to read notes. Uh, Matty Melly, uh, please, will you hand me a sheet of music? Thanks. Now, Costello, tell me. Get in hand, you nut. All right, all right. <laughs> What do you think, what's dopes in radio? <laughs> All right, Manny Mouse, hand me a sheet of music. Now, it says on the paper, he didn't give you nothing. Oh. <laughs> now, Costello, tell me what you see on that sheet. Not until you get the sheet of music from Manny. <laughs> That's fine. Now, tell me, tell me what you see on that sheet of paper. Um, take a good look. What do I see? I see a bunch of flies sitting on the fence. No. <laughs> Those are those. Maddie Melnick wrote this music. Did he write it in bars? Uh, personally, Maddie wrote this. He wrote this song in 32 bars. 32 bars he wrote the music. No wonder his music is so staggering. <laughs> now, now, Costello. He should know better than to write music in bars. Why don't he do it cut up at home like other music? Now, wait a minute, Costello. Maddie Melnick is a great songwriter. Mm. I was with Maddie last night when he wrote a song in, in four flats. It's four flats. Yeah, certainly. Are you, you you guys sure get around, don't you? No, 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 you idiot. Four flats is the key in the key in the song is written. Matty used the key of four flats. Matty Malik has the key to four flats? That's right. Does his wife know about this? <laughs> when I say Matty wrote a song in four flats, I don't mean the kind of flats you live in. I mean the kind of flats you play in. And the number of flats gives you the key. And Maddie's key is four flats or eight flats. Oh, you mean the flats that Maddie plays in ain't the kind of flats he lives in because the, the key of the flats he plays in is four flats and the flat he lives in has nothing to do with the other four flats? Now you've got it. Now I've got it. I didn't even know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Abbott, you've got a lot of nerve discussing these subjects with me. Why, I have to be an opera star. I'll never forget my first concert in Carnegie Hall. The house was packed with Mink and Ehrman. It was? I wish there'd have been some people there. <laughs> what did you think? An old western ballad that I wrote myself entitled, Who Spilled the Beer on the Stove? Or, Foam on the Rain. <laughs> Why don't you such a good singer? Why don't you sing something right now? Okay, I will. A lazy Mary, will you get up? She said, Mother, I'm not able. Her mother said, You've got to get up. We need the seats for the table. <laughs> Costello, that was horrible. Yeah, Costello, if you really want to sing on this program, why don't you take some lessons? Now, my piano player is a great vocal coach. Come on over here, Herbert. Just, uh, just a minute, just a minute. Just a minute, Molly. This guy is a vocal teacher? Yes, I am, Costello. When I get through teaching you singing, you'll never forget me either. You, I'll be the light of your life. I'll be the light of your soul. Put on your hat, the light is shining in my face. <laughs> hey, my dear Costello, are you trying to insinuate that Herbert is bald? Take a gander at that age there, Dabbit. This guy wasn't born, he was hat. <laughs> oh, I never mind him, Herbert. Do you think... You think you can teach Costello how to sing? I should be able to. I taught Lassie how to sing. Lassie was a dog. You're a human? <laughs> now, for the first lesson, Costello, remember, the voice has got to be brought up from the diaphragm. You know where your diaphragm is? 
I haven't worn one of those things since I was a baby. No, no. Will you pay attention? I'm going to teach you now. Your voice must be brought up from the diaphragm through the larynx up here, see? Now, down here is your diaphragm. Now, follow me. See? I place my hand down here on your diaphragm. You got it? Then I move it up to your larynx, up here, see, through the esophagus. Then my hand goes up and down. Uh, larynx, diaphragm, esophagus, esophagus, larynx, diaphragm, larynx, diaphragm, esophagus, up and down. Larynx, 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 larynx. What's the matter? I... I... What are you laughing about? Are you ticklish? Only around the frying pan. No. <laughs> That's the diaphragm. Now, you've got a very, very magnificent voice. <laughs> now, tell her you have a magnificent you voice. You me, brother. <laughs> you've got a good voice, but you've got to bring it out. You've got to have full, round tones. Now, I want you to sing the vowels O and E together, like O, E, O, E. Come on, O, E. <laughs> Come on. Oh, ee, no, no, faster. Oh, ee, 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 oh, Bring it out, bring out your boy. Go ahead, bring out your boy. Bring your hand away and I'll bring it up. <laughs> you don't breathe right. Come on, inhale, inhale. What? I'd like to see you inhale. <laughs> I'd like to see you inhale with my hand over your mouth. No, 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 no. Look, I want you to breathe for me. Come on. I'm having trouble breathing for myself no. here. <laughs> Don't you understand? I'm trying to develop your voice. It's very simple. Remember the ancient Greek philosophers? You read history in books. The ancient Greeks, they used to sing, they developed their voice. They put pebbles in their mouth, like Demosthenes. You remember? What book? Pebbles in their mouth. The great orator. Now, we don't have pebbles, but I have some crackers here. Now, look. You see? We'll sing through the crackers. You put the crackers in your mouth like this. See? Now, watch me. Right through the crackers. Mm -hmm. Now. Do you, uh, do you see what I mean, Costello? I can't say anything. You blew the crackers right in my porch. <laughs> All right, now you go ahead. Uh, you want me to sing? I want you to sing through the crackers. You want me to sing Kayachi with crackers in my mouth? That's right. Okay, brother. <laughs> That's it. Now chew them up nice. I'm going to screw up plenty of them. Don't worry. <laughs> That's fine. Now you got got crackers. Now okay. sing it. I've got a mouthful right now, brother. <laughs> Go ahead, I'll see if I got you. What's that? The first four rows move back. I'm going to break this guy like a veal cutlet. <laughs> <laughs> you know you got white stretches? <laughs> oh, you're the crackers, you blew in my face. I want, I want you to listen to what my mama taught me. What your mother taught you? Go ahead, let me see it. Well, where did I get the morning? What did your mother teach you? Here's what my mama teach me. Peter, Parker, and that's only half the fun, folks. Just as many laughs yet to come. But first, listen to this. Friends, is this the mental picture you have of the western part of our country? Great mazes with cactus growing wildly, beautiful sunsets, wide ranges, the howl of coyotes, men riding the range on handsome steeds. Well, that mental picture is right in focus. But if you think of the brawling street fight, men walking about with six shooters and handlebar, mustachioed, rough-riding desperadoes, 
you're dreaming of the old West. Today's West is new, modern. Even its methods of capturing its criminals are strictly 20th century, as the Sheriff Show proves every Friday night over most of these same ABC stations. Yes, the Sheriff, Mark Chase, is a modern sleuth in modern, everyday dress, and he uses scientific methods to track down those who break the law. Even the lawbreakers of the West today are the modern sleek crooks and murderers you'll find in any big city, east or west. So, for 30 minutes of wonderful Western adventure, don't miss hearing the Sheriff's Show when it's on the air tomorrow night over most of these same ABC stations. And now, back to ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Hurry up, Costello. We're on in just a second. That's right, Abbott, but here's a small place to show off Susan Miller. Let's get her to sing a song. Okay, Costello. Ladies and gentlemen... Here's our singing star, Susan Miller, with the music of Maddie Malnick. You came a long way from Beijing. You climbed the ladder of success. I've seen the town and country cars that were parked out in front of your fancy address. You came a long way from Beijing. You broke a lot of hearts to see. I've met a gang of gloomy gals who were doing it all right till you came on the scene. You flew in from the Middle West and certainly impressed the population hereabouts. Well, baby, I got news for you. I'm from Missouri, too. So naturally, I got my job. Got them dropping by the wayside. A few and I ain't gonna know. You came a long way from St. Louis, but baby, you still got a long way to go. Don't you smile and say, baby, see it my way. I've seen it. Nothing. Honey, all of you, nothing you can do, I mean it. Dropping by the wayside, a feeling I ain't gonna know. Came a long way from Satan, the baby was still got a long way to go. Glad you're glad you don't, baby, you got a long all right, Costello, come back here into the studio. What are you doing out there in the alley fighting with all those kids? Well, it ain't my fault, Abbott. Just after doing my same trouble you take the series on a year, I become so famous that I have to fight with the kids over my autograph. <laughs> Were you fighting with those kids over your uh, autograph? Why? They don't want to take it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's cut out this nonsense, Castello. What case are you going to do uh, your Sam Shovel detective case for tonight? It's one of my most famous cases. I call it the Fish Market Murder, or they killed him just for the holiday. <laughs> The makers of Scrapeful Shaving Cream present Sam Cello, Private Detective. Scrapeful does away with shaving altogether. No brush, no lather. Just rub Scrapeful Shaving Cream on your face. Your whiskers grow inside your mouth, and you can bite them off. <laughs> Scientific laboratory tests prove that more doctors smoke Scrapeful than any other shaving cream. Men. Enter the Scrapeful Shaving Cream $50,000 cash prize contest. It's called Start the Music. <laughs> Here's all you have to do. Get a 35-piece orchestra together in your home. Have them start playing. And if we call you and we guess what they're playing, you send us $50,000. <laughs> and now to the adventures of Sam Trouble. Private 
Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, private detective. People ask me how I became a detective. I guess it came natural. I've always liked to follow people. When I was a kid, I always followed girls. I don't know why I did it. Now I'm growing up, and it's different. I know why I did it. <laughs> Things are quiet in my little office, so I decided to brush my teeth. I remember my dentist's advice. Brush the back of your teeth. So I brushed the back of my teeth the hard way. The hard way. I stick the toothbrush through my ear. <laughs> I walk over to the pencil sharpener on the wall and start turning the handle. I realize I have forgotten something. Taking my long, pointy finger out of the sharpener. <laughs> I go to my desk to get a pencil. It's mighty warm in my little office. I'm perspiring, so... I mop my brow, putting the mop back in the bucket. I realize it's time for lunch. I take a Charlotte Russe out of my lunchbox. I had just finished the Russe, settled down to enjoying Charlotte. <laughs> then the phone rang. Hello? This is Muggsy Mulligan speaking. I'm coming over to get you, Bulldog Drummond. My name ain't Bulldog Drummond. It's Sam Shovel. Oh, change your name, eh, Bulldog? Ain't this Walnut 8841? No, it's Granite 9903. Oh, change your number, eh, Bulldog? Is your office still in the tower building? No, it's in the star building. Oh, change your address, eh, Bulldog? Well, I'm coming over there and rip off your clothes. I'll tear off your coat. I'll tear off your shirt. I'll tear off your long red underwear. I don't wear long red underwear. Oh, change your underwear, eh, Bulldog? Times like this, I wish my pal, Lieutenant Abbott of the Homicide Squad, was here. All right. <laughs> Brush my teeth too hard. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott is the cop who solved the famous Hollywood jewel robbery case. He solved it the hard way. The hard way. <laughs> Hello, Sam Shovel. It's my buddy, Lieutenant Abbott. I think he's worried. He's wrinkling his brow and screwing up his face. He don't have to wrinkle his brow. His face is screwed up the way it is. <laughs> Sam, this is the filthiest looking office I've ever seen. What is that lump lying on the floor in that corner? That's a man. He's been lying on the floor in that corner for five days. I think he's dead. What makes you think he's dead? When I dust him, he don't wiggle. Sam, <laughs> who is that beautiful girl in that picture on your desk? Lieutenant, that gorgeous creature is a Pasadena society girl. I remember the day I met her. I could tell she was an aristocrat. She had class and breathing. Bowing low, I softly said to her, Cigar? <laughs> What did she say? Thanks. <laughs> I'll smoke it after dinner. <laughs> Look, Sam. Somebody threw a rock through the window. I'll examine the window. <laughs> uh, this is worse than I thought. What is it? The window is broken on both sides. <laughs> Look, Sam. Sam, what does the note say? It says that you two guys are smart. You'll start traveling right away. Who's it signed by? The Santa Fe Railroad. Are you Sam Shovel? I looked up. The most beautiful girl I'd ever seen was standing in the doorway. I spoke. Yes, I'm Sam Shovel. Sam Shovel, you took my father up the river. You took my uncle up the river. You took my brother up the river. So what? Sam, have you still got your canoe? I walked over to her. Papa, if you come one step closer to me, I'll let you have it. Honey, I got a good mind to let you give it to me. <laughs> Sam Shovel, you're a brave detective. 
I like fearless men. Come to my arms, Sam. I'll give you a kiss that'll make your head spin. Come here. <laughs> Sam. Sam. Did our kiss make your head spin? Sam, is there anything I can do for you? Call my mother and tell her that whirling Sam won't be home for dinner. <laughs> Enough of this nonsense. Miss, why have you come to Sam's double drop? There are two mugs who are trying to kill me. I live in a big house all alone. And I want you, Sam Shovel, to guard me. Sam, you can stay in the garage and guard me while I'm in the house. I'll take the case. Sam, you idiot. Don't you realize that those two mugs find you in the garage? They're liable to kill you. They find me in the garage. I deserve to get killed. <laughs> Lieutenant Abbott talked me out of handling the case of Millie the Magnificent Miller. I'm alone again in my little detective office. I glance at the headlines in the paper. Three crooks wanted in Los Angeles. I thought they had enough crooks in Los Angeles. <laughs> I get all kinds of cases in this particular office. Last week I investigated the case of Hagemar the banker. He committed suicide. He was sitting at his desk when suddenly he dived out of the window. His secretary was killed too. It happened so fast he didn't have time to get off his lap. Sam, I got here just in time. I found this guy hanging around outside of your office. Hey. All right, gotta get that wall, you guys. Put up your hands, coppers. This time I've got you. Better do as he says, Lieutenant Abbott. He's dead, sir. Listen, you guys, I'm gonna give you guys something that's been coming to you for a long time. You've been trying to duck it, but now I'm gonna see that you get it. Well, you got us cornered. Go ahead and give it to us. <laughs> Get him out of here! Now, before Adam and Costello have their final split, we bring you one more thought on this subject. The days of the glorified gangster are over, and the mess of the glamour of crime has been punctured to show not only that crime doesn't pay, but it's also a pretty unhappy and drab existence for anyone. No program proves this better than this is your FBI. Each official Friday night program shows how determinedly agents of the FBI start out to get their man on what, at first, might seem an unbreakable case. Recently, FBI men have been visiting towns throughout America talking to groups of teenagers. These meetings, designed to combat juvenile delinquency, have created interest and enthusiasm among their youthful press. At each one, a member of the FBI explains the workings of the organization. A behind-the-scenes FBI movie is shown. Firearms are demonstrated. And for the dramatic story of the country's outstanding crime-breaking group, here, this is your FBI Friday night when it's on the air over most of these same ABC stations. And now, back for a final word from ABC's Abbott and Costello Show. Costello, you ought to give up trying to be a detective. You wouldn't know a crook if you saw one. Oh, no? Well, how about that team that ran loose to get the park last night? He got all the women's sick and sold their purses with their money. Double size, hit you and hit you. That guy is all of his old stuff with him. You think they ought to get back the money? Oh, good night, folks. Remember, the Abbott and Costello Show is heard weekly on Thursday nights now. So listen again next Thursday evening for another great Abbott and Costello Show, produced and transcribed in Hollywood by Charles Vance. So good night for now, Farm.